What's up hobby friends? In this three-part video series, I'm going to be showing you how I painted Baron Mordo for Marvel Crisis Protocol. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I painted the skin, the hair, the pants, and the shirt. Hey. To paint the skin, we're using Vallejo's German Camel Black Brown, Leather Brown, AK Base Flush, Scale Color Pale Skin, and AK's Pale Sand. To paint the pants, boots, and belt, we're using AK Rubber Black and Scale Colors Hellbound Flush. To paint the vest and the sleeves and bandages, we're using Scale Colors Arabic Shadow, Oroko, AK Decomposed Flush, and Pale Sand. To paint the blue sleeve, we're using Vallejo's Dark Sea Blue, Scale Color Anthracite Gray, and bearing blue. So the next major portion of Mordo that we want to paint is the skin. And because the face is usually a very focal central part of the figure, we want to make sure that we get this uh, nuanced skin tone, especially from um, the actor Jowetal Ejiofor. He's got this very, very rich, almost um, caramel cappuccino color skin. It's got a very, um, warm orange mid-tone with some lovely it looks like greens and purples in the shadow tones and then as we get into the highlights it gets almost like an earthy khaki um hutch of yellow but still very pastel and pale the colors that we're going to be using to try and replicate this we're using Vallejo's german camel black brown and leather brown for our base coat and first highlight and we're going to mix up progressively into base flush pan earth and ice yellow. The tan earth mixed with the base flush provides a lovely cappuccino mix, and then we can vary the degree of our mixture with the red or, leather brown, sorry, leather red, leather brown, and the base flush for a hint of red, orange. We can use the tan earth to knock it back, and then ice yellow to introduce that yellow into our highlights. What we're also going to want to do is paint the eyes first. Now, one of the reasons I do this is it allows me to be a little more loose and I don't want to call it sketchy, but we can sort of overpaint with the eyes. We can mess around with the direction of or the facing of the pupils and correct as necessary before painting in the rest of the facial skin tones. One of the struggles that often happens is once you've painted and highlighted the entire face, when you go back in to do the eyes and you paint the pupils, when you do those dots or those black lines for the pupiling, if you overpaint onto the cheeks or onto the brow, it's a lot of work to go back in and correct because your skin tones are very similar to like a white or a yellow. When you have to paint back over a dark color, it does take quite a few coats and the finish is never quite the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the eyes first after we've done the base coat, we'll reapply our base coat and then we'll go up and highlight the rest of the face as normal. So starting with our German Camel Black Brown, we're just going to apply a nice diluted base coat. It may take a few passes, but we're going to do it over all of the skin. So with the base coat on the skin done, we're going to paint the eyes next. And to do this, we're going to be using two colors. We're using AK Tenebrous Gray and Scale Colors White Sands. Now, you want to avoid using pure black and pure white. Doing so, you end up with very, uh, very unnatural, very fake looking eyes that really stand out and don't look convincing at all. Your best bet is to actually use an off black and an off white. The exact specific tone of color doesn't matter as long as it's not pure black and not pure white. And that way it adds a much more realistic and convincing look. So we're going to start with Tenebrous Gray and we're just going to paint the eye socket as best we can. If we overpaint, not a big deal. All we're looking to do is paint the eyeball and get a, a tenebrous gray, quote unquote, black line. Once the tenebrous base coat is dry, we're gonna go back and work white sands, make sure it's nice and diluted, and we're gonna paint the whites of the eyes. Now there's two ways you can go about this. You can paint a white line that covers the entire eyeball. 
and then do a tenebrous grade dot afterwards for the pupil. Or you can do two white sands dots, leaving a dot for the pupil. The camera's up to you, it's up to your preference. Um, it all depends on your brush control and honestly, the sculpt itself. For models this size, I tend to prefer doing the white line for the whole white of the eye and then going back in with tenebrous gray to dot the pupil. This allows me to make sure that I get the whites good the first time. Um, and then I can correct afterwards with a tenebrous gray and just narrow in. You can see that I'm being a little messy with this. One, because the eyes aren't, at least from what I can tell, particularly hyper-defined on this, or just the size of it. But it's also a way for me to demonstrate why we do this stage first, why we paint the eyes first. Because it, be it becomes infinitely easy for us to go back in and correct and tweak the shape of the eye if we do it first and before having painted the rest of the face. And once we've got the whites of the eyes, we go back in with tenebrous gray. And we very carefully paint in the And then once we've got the pupil done, we take our tenebrous gray and we essentially black line around, slowly erasing the whites of the eyes until we're happy with the actual size of the eyeball. This is definitely something you couldn't do if you had already painted the entire face first. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just slowly painting it back in over the edges, shape and refine eyes until I'm happy with it. Playing around with the thickness as well as the corners. I think the corners are really important. And once you're happy with the eyes, you go back in with our base coat of German Camel Black Brown. And we just touch up where we overpainted with tenebrous gray. From here, it's just painting the face as normal, highlighting up to our progressive colors. We're going to start with a sudden jump to leather brown. Because the actor uh, has fairly Bright skin, it's not super dark in the shadows. We're not going to try and do too many intermediary steps between our base coat of German Camel Black Brown and Leather Brown. We're just going straight into our highlights. And we're only maintaining our deepest base coats and some of the darkest shadows. Now, when we get to the actual front of the face and we're painting the features, it's important to highlight the muscles um, properly. It's not just enough to oh, put a highlight on the cheekbones. We need to bring this highlight right carefully into the bridge of the nose right here. Tuck it right into the corner of the eye and then pull that down right alongside the side of the nose into the upper lip and then the jowls. Part of painting a very convincing face is making sure that we understand the anatomy of the, face, uh, the facial region and then highlighting accordingly. 
Remember, we're not highlighting separate elements on a face. We're not highlighting a cheekbone, and we're not highlighting an upper lip. We're highlighting a face. And we have to account for the fact that there is a layer of skin that covers all the face, and it does connect all these different features. And as we highlight up the rest of the face and the skin, as we work our way through our progression of colors, we're going to be really playing around with the degree or the amount that we're mixing in of the different colors. So we have our base flesh, our tan earth, and leather brown on the palette. And we're just going to mix up and apply um, different kinds of ratios for the highlights to try and nail down um, the different colors and sort of, I guess, the, the actual tone of skin that we're aiming for. Um, do remember that he is not Caucasian, right? So no matter how bright we take some of these highlights, we have to maintain a, a strong mid-tone that's um, fairly dark. The trick to painting convincing a dark skin tone is really in your mid-tones and your shadow tones. And then having those bright, poppy, shiny highlights. If you don't have a lot of experience painting uh, darker skin tones, I do highly recommend that you look at reference. Uh, you'll find that the way you approach them, the way you apply your highlights is quite different from how you would consider painting a Caucasian skin. It's very, very easy to over highlight a darker skin tone and end up making it look brighter than it needs to be or should be. And we want to introduce a little bit of ice yellow into the mix for some of our brightest highlights. But again, we need to be very sparing with this. And what we'll be doing afterwards is going in with the airbrush and really um, pumping up our nuancing, smoothing out these blends, recapturing a lot of our midtones. So I am going a little bit extreme with some of these highlights with the anticipation that the airbrush is going to knock back some of the strength of it. And I do apologize if I keep pulling this miniature out of focus. Um, unfortunately, this pose, the actual sculpt, it's very wobbly to try and hold it steady while applying my brush strokes and keeping it in camera in focus. So I hope in editing, I'm able to correct that and just keep it in focus. But I'm having a really hard time painting this, this face because of this, this that keeps happening. Every time I apply my brush stroke, every time I shift my hand, and honestly, that's just part and parcel to painting challenging models like this sometimes where like it's not a difficult sculpt, but the actual pose itself just applies these physical limitations that do increase the difficulty with which we're painting models with like awkward angles or things that stick out at weird angles that it's hard to get a brush into and make our life harder than it actually has any reason to be. I want to introduce more of that uh, cappuccino color. So I'm going in with some glazes of my uh, base flush and leather brown. To apply a bit of the um, nuancing through the airbrush, I've got a mixture in here that's a combination of my base coat and first highlight, so German camo black brown and leather brown. And I've introduced a bit of tenebrous gray to darken it and then Scarlet Blood to add a bit more readiness to it. So you can see the mixture is, it's a fairly warm, fairly uh, in the red tone because of the Scarlet Red. And we're just gonna do some very soft sprays and glazes into the midtones and shadows. I'm spraying from the direction of my shadows into my highlights, or against the direction of my highlights rather. And this will, Apply the nuancing into the shadows and mid-tones, help smooth out some of those blends while preserving the highlights. 
And then I'm just using pure scarlet red now. And I'm focusing in around the cheeks. Try and get a bit of rosiness in there, um, a bit of warmth. And that's the first pass of the nuancing. I'm gonna go back in with some mixtures and combinations of my mid and highlight tones and just touch up some of any uh, overspray areas, particularly around the nose, cheeks, and the brow. I intend to do another nuancing pass with hex lichen, but that'll be applied over the entire figure. So I'm gonna hold off until I've painted the rest of Baron Mordo before I do that. So to paint the black boots and leggings of Baron Mordo, we're gonna be using three colors. We're using AK Black, Marble Black, and Scale Color Hellbound Flesh. Basically a base coat, and then we're just gonna progressively highlight all the way through. Um, I discovered this recipe or this mixture when I was painting the ancient one. Really, really liked it. It creates a very nice um, earthy black tone with just a hint of green. And it's something that I'm going to carry across all of my convocation. So because we've primed the model black, we really don't have to do the base coat again. Um, although if there are any overpaints from the previous step, you want to go back in with your just pure black and touch up those base coats. And then we're just going to do a first pass of about a 50-50 mix of rubber black and black. And then we'll continue with pure rubber black. And I'm going to paint the leggings to demonstrate um, this recipe. And I mean, it's just a layering technique. When we paint the boots, it's very much the same thing, although we will go more extreme and sharp with our highlights just to help create a bit of a different material texture. So something more matte, fabric-y for the pants, and then shiny leather for the boots. And then from the rubber black, we're gonna start mixing in progressive amounts of Hellbound Flesh. And just slowly work our highlights up. Now, depending on whether you want the uh, pants to appear more black or more gray. You can leave more or less of the black showing. When I go back in with the airbrush, I will be using some rubber black and black to knock back the highlights, reintroduce those shadows, and then just darken everything. So right now I'm just focusing on sketching in the broad highlights. Now there is a seam line running down the crotch of his pants. At this stage, I'm not worried about maintaining it. I'm just highlighting across all the way through, keeping my highlights consistent across the folds of the fabric. When we go back in at the very end and touch it up, uh, we'll get some thin black paint and we'll reintroduce it. And I'll just keep adding in more and more Hellbound Flesh until I'm happy with how bright the highlight ends up being. So with the highlighting sketch done on the pants, we're not gonna go in with a mix of rubber black and black. I have it at about 50-50. And then we're gonna gently glaze back into our mid tones and shadows as we do with everything else. Very thin, very thin transparent layers. And we're just building up the color, smoothing out tra transitions, and then reintroducing some deep shadows. I'm really focusing on making sure that I spray from underneath, really capturing those folds and maintaining the highlights I've placed in. And we'll do the same with pure black. I approached painting the boots the same way, exact same three colors and exact same manner of nuancing with our rubber black and black afterwards to smooth out our midtones and our shading and really just punch shadows. 
The only difference is I push the highlights just a touch brighter, um, getting more into pure Hellbound flesh, especially on the two armor plates on the bottom. I'm not quite sure if the values there are 100% yet. I want to make sure that I paint the rest of Mortal first before revisiting the legs and the boots. It feels a little dark right now, especially compared to the bright runes and the smoke, but because Baron Mortal has a lot more brighter elements, I want to paint those up first and then see where we stand on the pants and boots. The next portion of Baron Mortar that we're going to be painting is the sort of khaki cream color of some of his robes, his sleeve, and his bandages. So looking at the reference, what that entails is we're painting this portion right here, the inside of his shirt right here, this sleeve and bandage, and then the bandage around his left arm and hand. We're going to avoid going terribly bright. It tends to be um, Fairly dark in the film reference, which is going to be my point of reference, not the actual studio paint job, but it does go fairly bright. So I'm going to try and maintain that similarity with the film and not the studio paint job. The colors we're going to be using are Scout Colors Arabic Shadow, Rocco, Decomposed Flesh, and some Pale Sand. Um, I'm going to limit how much Pale Sand I use, probably just for the extreme highlights, and maintain my colors in between the Rocco and the Decomposed Flesh. So to begin, we're just going to apply a base coat of Arabic Shadow over all of the elements are going to be that uh, khaki cream color. You're going to want to dilute your colors and do three or four thin passes to ensure a nice smooth base coat. And once we have our base coat of Arabic Shadow, we start to introduce Oroko into our highlight. And again, we're just gently progressing up. I'm ignoring uh, the seam line on the hem of this lower fold. I will go back in with a darker color, probably Tenebus Gray or the Arabic Shadow or a mix of the two, and uh, deepen that line after. But for now, I just want to maintain a consistent highlight across the entire fabric. Now, as I'm painting this uh, progressive highlight in through Oroko, I'm finding that it is already fairly bright. Um, and I don't know if I need to go any brighter than maybe a touch of decomposed flesh. I think we're going to skip the pale sands. We'll end up being too bright for what I'm going for. And once we've done our highlight of pure Oroko, we're going to go back in with decomposed flesh. And we're not going to do any intermediary steps. We're just going to go straight into it. I'm going to keep my paints diluted just a bit with the moisture from the brush on the wet palette. And we're just going to do some very quick scratchy fades out. I'm going to use the short strokes and try and keep the direction kind of cross hatchy. I suggest a um, almost like a like a burlap sort of material to the, the robes here. Now I'm going to focus more of this on like areas like the shoulders, collar of the shirt right here, the hem of the robes, and the bandages on the sleeves, or I guess on the forearms. I'm not going to go all out on the sleeves, more just picking out some of the top highlights. With our highlights done, we're moving on to the airbrush, apply our mid-tone transition smoothing and glazing. So we're just using Arabic shadow with a touch of Oroko. Very diluted and we're focusing on our mid-tones and shadows. Spraying in a way to catch the bandage folds just to help uh, bring back some of those, those lines, add additional shading. And if we overspray a little bit onto areas around, not a big deal. The layers of color that we're applying are so thin, um, it would take a lot of it to really uh, impact the color. And I've mixed in a bit of Tenebris Gray to knock back the value. And we'll do another pass into the deeper shadows. The Tenebris Gray will add a nice purplish tone to the, the shadows. I'm really, really in love with this color.
And then we'll go back in with some of our decomposed flesh and the roco and just bring back some of our edge highlights on some of the sharper folds. And we'll also use Tanibus Gray Diluted to bring back the hem of the portion of Where it gets to the brighter element, I'm going to mix in a bit of my Arabic shadow just to soften up that line a little bit. Paint the collar and his left sleeve. If you actually look at the film, for whatever reason, his sleeves are actually different colors. That's pretty cool. It's a neat little touch. We're going to be using three colors for this. We're using Leo's Dark Sea Blue. Scout colors, anthracite gray, and bearing blue. So these are almost like old GW, like shadow gray and not techless gray, space wolf gray, where they're like a gray blue, fairly cool, but not super saturated in a way that something like a AK dark sea blue might be. We're going to start with our dark sea blue and we're just going to apply a base coat. And we're going to be careful not to overpaint onto the tacky cream of the sleeves and the bandage. We're then going to start highlighting by using anthracite gray. And much like when we're painting the sleeve in the cream khaki color, we're just going to build up our highlights progressively. And really all we're doing is doing a step progression through the grays, ending with bearing blue. The highlighting done, I've got some of my dark sea blue from Vallejo in the airbrush and we're just going to smooth up our transitions and bring back some of our deep shadows. And then loading more tenebrous gray into the mix to darken it. We'll push those shadows just a little bit deeper. So we're going to be painting his hair in a stippling manner. And so what that means is we're just going to be using the tip of our brush and just doing a lot of little fine dots to get across that sort of um, fuzzy hair texture that Show It'll has. We're only going to be using two colors for this, AK Rubber Black and Decomposed Flesh. We're going to start with a base coat of Rubber Black, which I've already done off camera just to save ourselves some time. And you want to make sure that you are um, providing a nice, even base coat, very thin, all the way across. If you want to paint eyebrows, you can also use the Rubber Black to just faintly add the line there. Subtle. It's not very pronounced on the actor as well, at least not from the angles I'm seeing in the film. So we can be a little more soft with the eyebrows. It's not a big deal. And to highlight the hair, we're going to start with rubber black mixed with just a touch of decomposed flesh. And we're going to start applying our highlights. Now we're going to do some very broad, sketchy strokes to more or less capture the general form first before we start to highlight and stipple on top. Now we're not gonna be taking this super bright either, so um, there's not a lot of work to be done. Really, it's just this top plane that's gonna receive a highlight, mostly from the front, and then it sort of fades into nothing on the side. We continue our highlight, we just add a little bit more decomposed flesh, and then this is where we begin our stippling. And we're just going to gently apply our dots. You don't need to be too dense with them, otherwise the stippling is lost and you sort of lose that fuzzy hair texture that we're going for. Add a few highlights to that hairline. And then we'll do one more, with just another extra layer of decomposed flesh. Not pure, of course, we're just going diluted with the rubber black or mixed in. Focusing on the sharpest point of this hairline. And then we'll go back in with some glazes of rubber black. Smooth out that transition and knock back some of those shadows. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, Make sure you give it a like and check out the other two videos in this series.
consider subscribing for more videos weekly. And if you want to follow my other socials, I'll have links in the description below. Until next time, happy hobbying.